The WWE have an estranged relationship with long-term planning and thinking things through. Fans who watch Raw might be under the impression that they write it and rewrite it on the night every week, because mostly, they do, because Vince is madder than a sex frog. Sure, wrestlers get injured all the time and you can't plan too far ahead, but you should plan just a little bit. I mean, you should think about things just a tiny bit. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are top 10 WWE storylines that horribly backfired. Number 10, John Cena is shamed for homophobia. So you know how time passes, how that's a thing, how jokes that might have been okay a decade ago aren't gonna cut it? Think what you like about the increasing scrutiny that joke tellers are under these days, but what were WWE thinking having John Cena, the face of the company, go out there and call The Rock a fairy with a tooth, or in his feud with The Miz say, The Miz and Alex Riley are going to move in together. They're going to relax with a glass of warm Pinot Noir and watch The Notebook or reruns of last season's Bachelor. Well, tonight, I'm going to train you on how to be a man. Mmm. Thanks, John Cena. You do that. If WWE just looked at the words they were writing for more than no seconds, they might have realised that gay jokes aren't really a thing anymore, at least on global television. Glad caught wind of the comments, and the WWE were forced to issue a grovelling apology. Number 9. The Big Show turns heel, then face, then heel, then face. Why does anyone trust The Big Show? The man turns more than a Catherine wheel. Internet commentators have counted up to 21 heel or face turns in The Big Show's WWE career. That's 1.3125 turns a year. In 2008, he turned twice in one night, returning to the company after leaving as a heel, turning babyface to a big pop, then immediately turning bad again by attacking Rey Mysterio. He's flown between good and bad so often that it's impossible to get invested in the giant quizzling. When the big show weeps giant tears when being forced to do evil things by the authority, no one buys it because he's never been a good guy for longer than a cup of coffee. Number 8. Exploiting Latino Heat When Eddie Guerrero died in 2005, it was devastating. He was one of the best wrestlers in the world and beloved by the locker room and audience alike. The WWE mourned him the best way they could by cashing in on a dead man's legacy for cheap heat. Two weeks after Eddie died, Randy Orton crashed his low rider and later claimed that Eddie was in hell. Rey Mysterio won the Royal Rumble for Eddie, Triple H hinted that divine intervention from Guerrero helped him, and throughout Mysterio's world title reign he mentioned Eddie more than Hulk Hogan mentions his many brothers. For a full year, Chavo Guerrero couldn't feud with anyone without his uncle being mentioned. Now sure, Eddie Guerrero knew how to play the game and probably wouldn't have minded his death being used to further some storylines, but after a while it began to create real backlash, with Mysterio getting some terrible reactions from uncomfortable fans, all as he was supposed to be the plucky underdog babyface. Number 7. Sin Cara Now, Sin Cara turning out to be a botch monkey made of glass wasn't technically WWE's fault, but they didn't make it easy for the faceless one. Introduced with all the hype in the world and set up as the heir apparent to Rey Mysterio, the man renowned throughout Mexico as Mystico was going to be a big deal in a WWE, and then he botched the entrance for his first match. Now, the WWE can be blamed for not training Sin Cara enough in the WWE style, which is very different to the flamboyant Lucha Libre he was versed in, and also for giving him that god-awful yellow lighting that made everyone look like they were fighting in a Turkish brothel. The fans rejected the character, turning him into an international joke. Number 6. The Brawl for All Hey, said a dumbass in 1998, let's get a bunch of guys who are filled with testosterone to the point that even their beards have beards and tell them to punch each other for real. The Brawl for All pitted wrestlers against each other in very real boxing matches for a prize purse of $100,000. They were essentially legalised bar fights and the fans weren't thrilled at watching mid-carders womp on each other like pissed up bears. To make matters worse, Dr. Death Steve Williams was supposed to win the tournament and use it as momentum to take into a feud with Steve Austin, but after being crushed and injured by Bart Gunn, his credibility was shot and he was released months later. Then, after winning the tournament, Gunn himself was humiliated by Butterbean at WrestleMania 15 and suffered a similar fate. No one benefited from the brawl for all, except perhaps people with a fetish for bum fights. Number 5. Million Dollar Mania In 2008, to drive up flagging ratings, Vince McMahon decided he would give away money live on Raw to viewers watching at home. People would register their telephone numbers and Vince would choose one at random to call and offer people cash. What could possibly go wrong? Well, lots, since Vince McMahon is older than most trees and working a phone got tricky. He would face wrong numbers, drop calls, long silences while the fans almost clenched themselves inside out with awkwardness. Ratings didn't go up, so they were just giving away money for nothing. The angle was about in grand fashion, having the set collapse on top of Vince McMahon. He then screamed, I can't feel my legs. 
Number 4. Fake razor and fake diesel. Anyone who thought this was a good idea should be punched, then made to watch their loved ones be punched, and then be punched by their loved ones. Scott Hall and Kevin Nash went to WCW in 1996. Although they weren't calling themselves Razor Ramon and Diesel, names owned by the WWF, they sure as hell acted like their old characters and had huge successes in the process. Vince sued, then thought, what the hell, screw those guys, I'll just get a new Diesel and Razor. Like Doctor Who, the characters apparently regenerated and emerged on Raw being played by two new wrestlers, Rip Bogner as fake Razor and Glenn Jacobs, yep, Kane as fake Diesel. The gimmick couldn't have got over if it was fired from a bloody catapult and made the WWE look outclassed and out of touch in the process. Number 3. Mohammed Hassan. Now we've already discussed this in the Undertaker video but it bears mentioning again. It was brutal, brutal bad timing that an angle featuring not terrorist honest character Mohammed Hassan was aired the very same day as the London bombings. But WWE, to be honest, had been circling disaster for a while with the angle. First of all, Hassan wasn't Arabic, he was Italian, which raises its own problems. Second of all, Hassan was a man bringing up reasonable points about the demonization of an entire religious culture based on actions of fringe maniacs within it, and he was also portrayed as the bad guy. Third of all, he summoned terrorist looking masked men by praying. This was always going to end badly. Hassan's career was ruined and he never wrestled again. Number 2. Bootista. Anyone in WWE who claims they planned the way WrestleMania 30 turned out from the start is a damn liar who will go to hell for lying. Here's what they actually planned. Batista returns looking out of shape and wearing bad hats, he wins the Royal Rumble, he beats Orton at WrestleMania, and uses the belt to promote Guardians of the Galaxy. The fans love it, cake and coffee for everyone. Except the fans sort of had their hearts set on someone else. When it transpired that Daniel Bryan wasn't even in the Royal Rumble, the fans burned the whole thing down with Batista inside. They essentially turned him heel, calling him Bootista and rebooked the WrestleMania main event through sheer power of collective whinging. Thankfully, WWE learnt their lesson and the next Royal Rumble was received with universal acclaim. Number 1. The Beast Beats the Streak. If you're going to do it, for God's sake, do it right. And they didn't. The thing that no one wanted to happen, happened, and Brock Lesnar broke The Undertaker's undefeated streak at WrestleMania. See, there have been no real benefits to crushing the most unironically treasured thing in the pro wrestling industry. It made Brock look tough, but so does Daylight. It made The Undertaker look like an old man, robbing his WrestleMania 31 match of any real drama, and the man that was supposed to receive the rub from beating the guy who beat the streak was such poison to the fans that for two years in a row the WrestleMania main event had to be rebooked. Lesnar's still around, so the angle might still pay off, but considering that Brock was always going to be hard to beat and a big name draw, what did the most shocking WrestleMania moment in history actually achieve? And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments and don't forget to like, share and subscribe and you can even follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com and I'll see you soon.